This lesson deals with the S domain transformer. You can find these notes in the ECE202 ebook in chapter 15, starting on page 15. Let's take our time domain transformer, which is shown here, with V1 and V2 and I1 and I2, and a mutual inductance M. And we had these equations previously that V1 is equal to L1 DI1 DT plus M DI2 DT, and V2 is equal to M DI1 DT plus L2 DI2 DT. Now, if we take the Laplace transform of this, the Laplace transform of a derivative is just S, so we'd have L times SI1. You could bring the L1 inside here. And likewise here for M times SI2. And likewise here, M times SI1. And then L2 times SI2. So we can have an S domain equivalent of our time domain, assuming zero initial conditions. And again, we could label this as our V1 and V2 as S domain voltages, and likewise I1 and I2, we're using uppercase letters and uppercase subscript. And then our mutual inductance here would be S times M. Now to construct an equivalent circuit of this, all you have to do is make this set of equations. So what I've got here on this primary side is that I have voltage is equal to voltage plus voltage. This looks like Ohm's law. I've got a current coming in I1, and so I can just put an impedance SL1, but then I've got a voltage due to the current I2, and I could use a controlled source to create that. So let's take a look at that. So I have that V1 is equal to SL1 times I1 plus SM times I2. So I could take that current I2 and just transfer it, multiply it by S times M. This would not be an impedance, but just simply a current controlled voltage source. Our second equation was that V2 is equal to I2 times SL2 plus SMI1. So the same idea here. So wherever you see a transformer, you can now replace it by this equivalent circuit. Let's go back to our analysis as we did earlier in the course. Let's do an example to see how I might use this. Consider hooking up two inductors in parallel with the opposite dot notation. Let's find the equivalent inductance looking in. Now, whenever you have two coupled inductors, you can replace those inductors by their S domain model. So where L1 is located, we're gonna replace that with SL1 and a controlled source with SM times I2, and we're gonna define I1 coming into the dot and then leaving it this way. Likewise for L2, we'll have the current I2 defined in this direction with SL2 plus SM1. Okay, now we can take a look at writing equations. So let's assign a mesh equation current here and a mesh equation current here. Call it I sub A and I sub B. Very important that we keep these orientations for I1 and I2 correct. And in a particular case here, we have that I1 is equal to I sub A minus I sub B. And then we also have that I2 is equal to minus I sub B. So I can write the equations by inspection or we could just do Kirchhoff's voltage law, run a loop. Uh, let's just do that. So the rise in voltage here would equal the drops across here. So V sub A is equal to SL1 times I1 plus SMI2. Let's substitute in the value for I1 as I sub A minus I sub B and for I2 minus I sub B. Then we can group together all the things that multiply I sub A and I sub B. So here we've got SL1 times I sub A and then I sub B has a minus sign and then SL1 and SM. So we've got these two added together and then a minus sign. Let's go around this loop counterclockwise. So I have a drop of SL1 I1, a drop of SM I2, a drop of SL2 times I2, and then a drop of SMI1. So it just drops around the loop, no rises, so we'll just set that equal to zero. So again, let's tune in the value for I1 and I2. I1 is IA minus I sub B, so here and here, and then I2 is minus I sub B. Let's group all the things that multiply I sub A and I sub B. So here's I sub A, it's SL1. We also have a value here for times I sub A, which is S times M. And things that multiply I sub B always have a minus sign with it, so this first term here is our SL1. Here's SL2, and then I've got SM twice that multiplies I sub B. So I got a 2M times a S and then a minus I sub B. So I have two equations of two unknowns. Could put that in matrix form. So V sub A is equal to SL1 times I sub A, and then minus S times the quantity L1 plus M times I sub B. Here's our second equation, the quantity S times L1 plus M times I sub A, and then minus I sub B times S and the quantity L1 plus L2 plus 2M. Now to find the input impedance, I need to find the current I sub A, which is coming out of the voltage source V sub A. So I'll put this into column one and then repeat the same matrix here for the determinant. Doing Kramer's rule with our numerator and then our denominator matrices. So this times this is equal to this term here. And then I've got this times this minus this times this. And that's this term and then this term. 
divide through by a minus s. So it gets rid of that and that. And it gets rid of this and one of these and gets this as a minus sign and one of these. So it's shown on the next line. Let's multiply all this stuff out here. So I've got a common s, then I've got an l1 squared, an l1 l2, and then a 2m times l1. Then I've got this squared, which is going to be l1 squared, m squared, and then the inner product times 2. So those are those three terms here, but we're also multiplying through by a minus sign. I do get some term cancellations. This cancels with this, and this term cancels with this. So if I take v sub a divided by i sub a, take the reciprocal of this denominator and divide it by this. So I've got L1, L2 minus M squared divided by L1 plus L2 plus 2M. And I have an S out here in front. So that's the input impedance to my circuit. Now by the conservation of power, I can't have a negative input impedance. In other words, I'll be generating power without a source. And so that implies that this numerator has to be greater than or equal to zero. That implies that L1, L2 is greater than M squared square root of both sides of the equation, that the square root of L1, L2 is greater than or equal to M. And this ratio is how we defined our coupling coefficient. So we could have used this example to derive that constraint, or we can use the energy argument in supplemental problem 15.1, or the derivation we did back on page 10. This is a model for an S-domain transformer and some applications.